Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 313 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. <laughs> Today, we're cool. Oh, you're grooving there, Mr. Grizzly. Today, well, you, you are a kind of guy. guy. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, today, recording day is Thursday, February 8th, 2024, and it's going to be a beautiful day here at the Beaver Lodge, and it's more of a beautiful day in my world because yesterday my double scrolling team won again, and uh, yeah, so I, I don't, not sure if I mentioned it on the show, but for this time we had a shortened round, five games rather than the normal seven, even though there's eight people, we usually round robin. And we lost one on the day that we had freezing rain, and it was against a team that was closer to our level. Okay. Uh, so we ended up having four matches, and matches we're ranked about sixth, and our four matches were against team number one, two, three, and seven for some reason. So it was pretty much telegraphed that we were going to go down, but we came back from four points down to tie against the team that was number two, and yesterday we defeated team number seven. Mm. Uh, we lost against the first team, which is the team that won the champ, the whole championship last year. Um, but, uh, there was some surprise upsets yesterday and it looks like the way that the wins and losses fell that, um, there's a good chance we might be staying in for the last round. We do not know how we're doing this, but they run with it. We, we are an A team now, it seems, and it seems like it's the real deal. So yay. But, uh, yeah, next week we got to play the, the, the number one team. So, yeah, now we, we beat them last time, but it seems that uh, yesterday number one and number two played against each other, and team number one had a five point lead over, after over team number two at one point. So I was like, uh, I think we might have pissed them off. <laughs> well, you know, hell hath no fury like a pissed off curling team. Uh, well, hell hath no focus, let's say. And the curling okay. team that lost to a team lost to that got a surprise lost to a team it should not have lost to I guess. <laughs> Fair point. So and you know provincials are coming up so it's time to put in that focus. But anyway, yes, we're still in it somehow magically we're doing it. Um, so I'm a happy beaver. All right, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, the Pepper Master, the Miss Fee Mysteries from Can uh, from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com, and Miss Grizzly. How's your mental health today, sir? You know, all things considered, it's not too bad. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm uh, experiencing a bit of a uh, minor skin allergy to a particular brand of soap that every time I use it, this is what happens. So it is going to be cut out of my life forever. I'm not going to mention the name, but um, they have a campaign for real beauty. <clears throat> so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Every time I use it, uh, my skin just uh, literally, I'm, I want to tear my skin off from my neck up and from uh, my hips down, basically. 
Uh, Doctor, it hurts when I do that. Oh, don't yeah, do that. don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is don't exist because everything, like, there's not a square inch of my body right now that just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I just, talking. I literally just lathered myself from head to toe in um, in a vino. Yes. Anti itch, eczema, lotion, moisturizing, specialty, blah blah blah. And I had to take a Benadryl. So yep. that I make it drowsy before the end of the show today. And then I'm going to have about a bucket of this so that I can get through the day. <laughs> it's going to be a challenging work day. Let's put it that way. And it's been a very busy work week for me in the office. Yes. So today is no different. Yes. You heard it here, kids. I might have a drowsy chaperone on the show today. It All right. Happens. It happens. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a programming note, I guess. Uh, tomorrow, uh, unfortunately, Kids and Cubs, I will not be able to join you. Uh, so Mr. Grizzly will have to fly slow, solo. I have to uh, travel to Ottawa for a medical appointment with a specialist. Nothing terrible, just checking and on stuff, so don't worry. Yeah. Uh, and we were not able to do a pre-record for uh, tomorrow. So it will just didn't work out. Busy, so uh, yeah. you will have Mr. Grizzly solo. Uh, All right. I, I will send you a link that you could hop in on your phone if you want. Uh, it's up to you. I'll, I'll send you the link. I, I might be on the bus at the time of the show. So the... Well, no, no, I no, no. You can, you can jump in and, and just have yourself muted and then every now and then just jump in and say something, you know what I mean, if you want to put some, but you know. That, that might be. So idea. that way you're on camera and, and you'll be able to hear, but just mute and unmute yourself. Well, actually I can mute and unmute you from here. So that way you could uh, still. Yeah, that might work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that might work indeed. All right. Uh, in the news. Uh, kids, uh, if you've seen Lisa's, uh, who we always often show account, she has a wonderful, uh, lengthy clip about Daniel Smith appearing on, uh, I'm guessing it would be power play at the time and mm -hmm. not uh, question period with Vashti Capellos. And Vashti Capellos did about a 12 minute interview with her specifically on her trance thing and stuck with it. And ask questions. Now, it's being presented as a disaster, and it is, but it isn't a disaster in the way that some people think as a disaster. Mm -hmm. Vashi came prepared. Yes. So, for example, when she keeps on mentioning that institute in England, mm -hmm. for example, that she says has closed down, well, that's actually still operational, and there are two other institutes that will be taking over from it because apparently there were other things going on there that made it such that it had to close down. It wasn't yeah. so much the stuff that she's talking about. Uh, then she keeps on referring this one case. One. One case of someone who said that at 19, she got pressured into going faster than she would want to. Like this, and she's basing this on this one case. However, it seems that there has been absolutely no consultation whatsoever. When I said the JIPA principle, the greater involvement of people most affected, there's been no consultation whatsoever with any trans teens and probably their families and uh, going into that yesterday there were walkouts at schools we talked Across about it briefly i think uh, i might have talked about that on dean's show when i was on it but uh, victoria school is one of them and uh, that, those were organized by kids because kids know yeah. kids can tell when you're bullying their friends look we fully understand that your your frontal lobes aren't fully formed until you're at least 25 years of age. We get that. Doesn't make you dumb. Doesn't make you unaware. Does not make you stupid. Kids know. Yes. So kids walked out. And then you saw a lot of people that were there with some people on Twitter going, well, don't, it's judging by the number of kids that are there, about 25% of the staff should be fired for like, so you can't make that inference judging by the number of the kids. You don't know how many teachers. So like, oh, there's like, one quarter of the school kids walked out, then one quarter of the teacher should be fired for indoctrinating. It's like, kids know when you're coming for their friends and kids will stand up for their friends. It was like, I felt like a verse of Whitney Houston should become, I believe the children are our future. <laughs> Teach them well and let them lead the way. I mean, come on, man. Right? This interview with Smith, it's not like she's, how do you put it? So she's making all these mis these things that Vashi Capellas was like coming back to her with actual facts, uh, you know, making the case, for example, about top and bottom surgery that I made on Dean's show. Bottom surgery was already 
prohibited for under 18, mm -hmm. 16 above top surgery was allowed. There was a certain number of cases last Eight. year, so 22. Yeah, but 22 mm -hmm. total. I don't know where she got the eight number because there's oh, eight was two. Eight was under 18. Uh, oh, eight under 18. Okay. So and 22, we, eight under 18. Yes. And there are reasons why they allow the top surgery, right? Well, a lot of is reasons. because kids can get breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes girls, when they get into puberty, the breast gets too, but too big and there's pain. So there's some breast surgery. The, there's no statistics kept on why those 22 were done. So it might be possible that even of those out of those 22, not one was a top surgery. Not one. Yeah. Right. So for kids. A bottom surgery, you mean? No, no, a top surgery. Oh, a top, not one was a top? It, it could be possible because oh, there's oh. no data. Right, right, right. They don't Sorry. keep data as to the reasons. So it is entirely possible that not one of them was a top surgery for someone under 18 that had mm. to do with anything having to do we with don't being know. transgender. Yeah. We don't know. And Danielle doesn't either. So this policy is based on feelings, yeah, not facts. I, I, and no I have consultation And no consultation with the community that was going to be most affected by the decision. Not. I have reason to which has which has caused her to say caused the government to say well you know we're, there, there's still more consultation to be done mm -hmm. no 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 don't worry this is not it i mean we still have some more work to do and more consultation to be done yeah 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 you think um well she's done such an about face on this from just 10 years ago right oh yes so which i have reason to believe there's a certain uh person who wants to take the province back who's leading things david parker who is giving her these talking points because oh, yeah. why does she have such an about face she's a libertarian for christ's sake right you've seen her sumerian tattoo which is all about liberty yep yep so and when danielle smith is explaining it you see that she's she'll start reversing herself but she and i was going to show clips from this but however, there's a better clip yet. So we'll, I'll try to put the find the link for the, the Vashi Kapalas one and put it in the chat for you uh, so that you can go take a look at it because you should see it because this is journalism, how it should be done. Yes. How it should be done. I'm not sure if maybe Vashi Kapalas has someone in the family. Well, because she, 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 she's a pretty, um, she'll come at you type interviewer like this, mm -hmm. but it usually seems a lot of people have the feeling that she's a little more pro on the conservative side by her interviewing style and the style of questions that she asks. Mm -hmm. But this one, she seemed to like really have her facts and really come prepared. So it's almost like she was motivated by something. Maybe she knows someone or has someone that she cares about. Well, that's entirely possible. But also I think it boils back to the fact that a few years ago she asked, she sent a message to Danielle Smith if she was going to cross the floor from Wild Rose to, to the conservatives at the time. And her response, Danielle Smith's response to Vashi was a piss off. So I think there's a personal vendetta here, but hey, I could be wrong. I'm wrong all the time, but a lot of things. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Uh, she got a message from Daniel Smith saying, "Piss off." So I'm like, "Oh, okay." You 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 shat on me while I was climbing the ladder. I'm up a little bit higher now on a specific platform. Guess what runs down the ladder when I put my butt over the platform? Mm, 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 mm. That is very interesting. That is definitely interesting. Uh, so yeah, it was a it was a disaster. But it's not like you're going to watch it and you're going to say, "Well, you know, she didn't seem to be tripping over herself." She because didn't. She's media but, trained. Yes, but if you listen to the answers, uh, yeah. That's the thing. Pay attention to what she says, not how she says it. How she says it, if... So if this was an audio only, if this was a radio interview, you would hear, oh my God, she failed miserably. But because it was visual, she doesn't stumble, she doesn't stammer, she doesn't err um and ah her way and blame the Prime Minister. And we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, uh, or pause or, or, or she doesn't do any of those things. And because it's a visual medium, it may trick you into thinking she didn't do too badly. 
But if you pay close attention to what she said, <laughs> oh man, it was a slaughter. Yeah, it was indeed. And she came come, uh, and Rashi Capellas kept coming at her. Um, now, I do not know why I cannot find the damn clip. Well, why don't we uh, just go on to the next little video clip that we have here to show. Well, I mean, I want to show the Pierre Polyev thing. I don't want That's to do the one. That's the one. Okay, you've got yeah. it. Yeah, okay. yeah, I got it. It's right here. Okay. Duh. I just saw you wrote it to me. Duh. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> you need a coffee, sir? <laughs> it's a good thing I'm allegedly cute because some days I'm not too bright, kids. So, um, you know how we said keep on, Polyev, keep asking him the question till he gives an answer? Yeah. See, and then when he doesn't want to give an answer, it's like, hey, you know what? We ask the questions and stuff, right? So, um, a little bit of that happened yesterday. Because journalists are smelling, there was one thing that journalists love, it's blood in the water. Oh yeah, the waters are chummed right now. Okay, yes. Nothing makes a group of journalists focus like blood in the water. And when you have a guy that works this hard to not answer a question after two days, and I think Justin Ling may have given permission by asking against yesterday, they came back at him yesterday. And yes. this time, this time, they committed journalism. Let's watch this and just enjoy. Deal if you become prime minister, well, we, we brought in the, the Ukraine free trade. The deal. new one, the new version. There is well, no new one. What there is is a. It was just passed the no, no, problems yesterday. There, if I, oh, is that the wrong clip? That's the Ukraine one, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh darn it! I got the wrong clip. Hang on, I'll, I'll yeah. get the right clip. <laughs> we, well, we we need that one too, but that's yeah, the wrong I'll keep one. That one. I'll keep that one aside. <laughs> Don't worry. That's a good one too. I said the wrong one. <laughs> darn it. We're this close to being smooth. Just this close. <laughs> I love it. The, but trust us, kids, the, the Ukraine clip is is something to see as well, but for different reasons in this case. Okay, I got it here. All right. Just took me a minute. All right, let me just load it up. And here we go. This this is the one where this is the one we wanted to give you. Do you support do you support age restrictions for puberty blockers and hormone therapies for trans kids? Um, I think that uh, Justin Trudeau is trying to divide and distract Canadians by spreading disinformation about uh, the decisions that premiers and parents are making. I want to know you, I want to know what do you think? What do you think? I want to know your position. What is your own party policy? It's your own party policy. At party convention. I think we should protect the rights of parents to make their own decisions what does it mean? with regards to their children. And I believe that adults should have the freedom to make any decision they want about their bodies. But minors but children, I think children, I think children and medical interventions for minors as your own party members suggested. Medical to. interventions like what? The, that, it, that is the language that your party What medical used. interventions? Well, you would have to ask your party members. What medical such interventions? Such as medical interventions, such as puberty blockers and hormone replacement. For minors? Yeah. Yes. Irreversible? You're talking about. I, 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 I want to like you, to understand you your position. You no, I don't want to be, I want to be clear. I just want to be clear. For minors. Do you blockers for minors? Yes. Do you agree with that? Do you agree yeah. with that? I think that we should protect children and what their ability mean? to make adult decisions when they are adults. So you think only adults? Only adults should make. Oh, you said yes. Just, just to be clear, you said yes. Only adults should take puberty blockers. I think we should protect children. Let them make adult decisions when they become adults. So that means you support age restrictions. You are against. Puberty blockers for kids under the age of 18. Is that, is that yes. unclear? Okay. okay. What about, can I ask you? Okay, you realize the idiocy in that. Yes. Um, puberty begins under the age of 18. <laughs> so if they're over 18 yep. taking puberty blockers, they're going to be really ineffective because you've already gone through that process. Yes. And as Mayor Nenshi said on the show yesterday, Said, puberty blockers are reversible are reversible 100%. and he's sitting there and he's sitting there going like this irreversible. irreversible like this no they are reversible what is not reversible is the effects of puberty after they've happened well this this is the thing puberty is going to happen period it's going to happen you can block it and hold it because a child may be developing way too soon because 11 year olds have started to become I had a mustache at 10. Holy crap. <laughs> a beard at 12, a hairy chest. No, hairy chest at 12, a beard at 13. Wow. 
<laughs> so and then my voice didn't crack till I fully cracked till I was 21. But you you probably <laughs> at the time had you known would you have taken puberty blockers at the time? Oh hell yes. Yeah. Cuz it's, it's, it's for that no cuz let me put tell you one thing. The first guy in class that sprouts hair is like the first girl in class that sprouts breasts. Yeah. You yeah. get teased and laughed at and yeah. oh, oh my god. Now of course we you know I didn't like being teased and laughed at. I don't find, you know, so I, uh, nobody does. Like but if somebody had given me the option back then to not be teased and laughed at because I sprouted yeah. hair three, four years, three, four years before everyone else, yeah, I might have considered that. Yeah. Might have. Might have. You don't know. It's a long time ago. But it, but it was yeah, exactly. It was like at that point, we we're like in the early 80s and it wasn't an option. So it's kind of moot. But but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It, it's it started early. It started early. I can show you pictures. I mean, grade five. I got the little fuzz coming in. Mm. Grade five. See, I was a bit of a late bloomer by the time I was. So uh, when I was uh, fifteen, fifteen was I fifteen? Yeah, I was fifteen, and my voice hadn't cracked, and uh, I wasn't growing. And then, mom, at Christmas time, I got three new pairs of pants. And they were so long, we had to cuff them, hem them inside, you know, this mm -hmm. far. By February, not only were the hems out, but they were this much too short. Mm. So in a three-month period, I grew six inches. Gee. Yeah. So when it hit me, it hit me hard. But it was a slow process, and then boom. Now, I didn't start shaving until I was like 17. Yep. So this guy basically... Tried to go back to his playbook, wasn't allowed, should protect the rights of parents. We know they're not protecting the rights of all parents, not the rights of loving parents that do want to give or allow their children access to this medically proven treatment. They're sticking their nose in the affairs of families. They're sticking their nose in the affairs of doctors. They're acting like they're bigger experts than the actual medical associations and the doctors that work in this field. He goes back... Like what, like what, like what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questioning them, um, you know, acting confused. Oh, no, I just really want to understand what you're saying. Right. I guess, and then, you know, protect the right of children to make adult decisions, but only when they're adults, and, which is just gibberish. And then at the end of it, do you support? Yes. And clearly, he really cares about this issue because if he cared about this issue, I guess he would know that it's the, Hormone blockers, not the puberty blockers. Not the hormone blockers, sorry, hormone therapy. Right. To promote the change, not the puberty blockers. Right. So he, he didn't even care enough about the issue to actually learn enough about the issue to speak about it intelligently when he was trying to deny it because he never thought he was going to get there. Right. Criminals commit crimes because they never think that they're going to get caught. Well, this is why they, they do it. Smarter. Huh? Yeah. So he thought he was smarter. I guess, but the gang got them, and they forced a yes out of him. These people are terrible when they go off script mm -hmm. because he literally ended up saying, he literally ended up saying, Joyce Napier, I think that was the voice mm -hmm. was there. As himself, so, you know, so puberty blockers for adults. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, and they ask him the question, Justin Trudeau is, oh, for Christ's sake, you keep saying that talking point, and it's a meaningless talking point because it's not addressing the issue or answering the goddamn question. Oh, for the record, Mohan, I've had this voice since I was 15. <laughs> yep. So it's like, what, but, but yeah, what do you think? So what they got think? an answer out of him finally. Yeah, they and just had to badger that the hell out of him. And that he's dumb. Puberty blockers for over the age of 18? Yes, I'm fine with that. So so after the cows get out of the barn, you're going to close the door to keep them inside? Is that what you're doing? Because that's mm -hmm. what you just said. You yeah. Idiot. Yeah. And one thing this about guy wants blockers. to be prime minister and he doesn't know how basic human bi uh, ge uh, um, biology works. Thank you. I, I almost said biography and I knew that was really yes. wrong. Yes. <laughs> And the thing about puberty blockers that a lot of people don't know is that if you do take them and you get older and you realize that, yes, you did make the right decision, 
puberty blockers often make it so that you don't need a top surgery. That's right. Mm -hmm. So they actually prevent all this mutilation of children. Well, once they're no longer children, they, go for, they might not need that surgery at all as a result of that. It's kind of important considering, you know, how much top surgery is driving them batty. Well, and by the way, top surgery is, irrevers is reversible. Yes, it is, but I mean, it's... It's reversible. Yes. I know many women that have had breast cancer and had double mastectomies and have had implants. Yeah. Reversible. Yeah, but then she goes back to the, to the whole breastfeeding thing, right? Yeah, and but apparently that, that uh, there's, there's uh, medical technology and medical science that can um, help with that too, apparently. I'm just learning this. I didn't know. Apparently, yes. And they can even implant milk ducts in uh, uh, trans women. So if you were born male, mm. okay, because the vessels are there. Like we're born when, when, when you're a zygote until I think something like the sixth month, your gender is not determined. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, not gender. Your sex is not determined because that's why we're all born with nipples. Cause mine are, are, are barely decorative cause they're almost underneath my armpits. But with, with women, uh, they develop breasts and they're designed to feed babies. I can't feed babies because, you know, but here's the thing that's, we're all born with the same parts at first. And then it just takes a switch at some point, uh, in utero. I, I, I don't have all the terminology at hand. I have read about it extensively and I do have a number of, uh, pediatrician friends along with a few, um, family doctors and a couple of surgeons that I know who we've discussed this at length and they're like, how do you know this? Uh, they have these things called books. <laughs> I did it. I learned it the same way you did. I read about it. I just didn't go to class. Exactly. There's, um, on the, on YouTube, there's a biologist named Forrest Valkai, V-A-L-K-A-I, um, from the United States, but he really explains this stuff very scientifically you know mm -hmm. so there's just two genders and then he could like he could turn around and say, oh no no you under you understand that there are animals that can actually change their gender from one to the other you know that they're you know and he talks about everything like this so he says like a you know you may say that there's only two genders but a biologist says no <laughs> there are plenty of examples of the nature of that not being the case so and he's able to explain it and he's very enthusiastic enthusiastic about biology so yeah uh, if you check them out, Forrest, F-O-R-R-E-S-T, Valkai, V-A-L-K-A-I. I think I can put a link um, here for the kits to his YouTube channel if you're uh, looking for some actual science, actual science from a biologist on gender and sexuality and whatnot like this. If you, so He does all, all stuff biology, but if you look for those ones completely, especially when he has like a talking to atheists or something like that, uh, there's a show apparently on the states or something or atheist talk something like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that he appears on often and like this and he'll he'll have debates with with people and see he says well yeah, this is the atheist point of view <laughs> here here you go just by if we're talking just biology you would be incorrect this but he's not threatening and he's very enthusiastic and friendly and takes on uh, he's got the right tone for this type of thing so it makes it uh, actually interesting to watch and not in a ooh get him just in mm -hmm. a Mm -hmm. It's like, ooh, facts, facts, ooh, more facts, ooh. So if you love facts, you'll love this guy. Okay. Uh, well, and, and I can tell you right now, there are three sexes that I fully know about. There's male, female, and intersex. If you mm -hmm. don't know what intersex is, I'm going to tell you right now. Somebody with born, born with both uh, male and female genitalia, that's intersex. How they choose to identify is up to them. Yeah. And that's it. So, that's all I have to say about it. That's it. Yeah. Gender so, is a spectrum and it's an ideology. Sex is biology. And there's three of them that I'm aware of there. I don't know if there's more, but there's three of them hmm. for certain. So sliding from that one to later on or another time during this press conference in scrum where he's asked about Ukraine. Oh yeah. Here because we go. the 
conservatives voted against the free trade deal. And uh, I actually like, it sounds a little self-serving, but I actually like Dean's tweet on this. It was, and this is and this whole deal is the exact fucking opposite of leadership. Lying, self-serving, ego-driven, emotional, sarcastic, aggressive. This is the last human being I trust any decision when it matters the most. He's embarrassing. Mr. Grizzly, please. Oh, this is this is a joy to watch, people. You're going to enjoy this. I know I certainly did. Love I'm gonna grab a coffee while I'm at it. Hang on. Could it, what there is is a carbon tax amendment. You know what happened if this deal didn't pass? Nothing, because we already have a free trade agreement. What we have now is a carbon tax amendment to a pre-existing deal. So what, so what would you do carbon, if you become prime minister? We're not going to honor, honor a carbon tax amendment. But your supporters we're, we're going like to. The we're going to. Why don't they support Ukraine? They don't because they don't support the carbon tax. So you they think that all of their support, their declining support for Ukraine, is linked solely to car carbon tax, tax in this free trade deal? The the carbon tax was inserted by Justin Trudeau, not by my supporters. Why did he do that? No, but I'm just curious. Can you explain to me why there is a carbon tax in the agreement? No, but the question is why. No, no, I asked you, ask you a question. You, you keep you keep asking with the agreement. We're the journalists. Why, 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 why can I ask you? We ask the question. I, I, I have the freedom to ask questions if I want to, and I've just answered. I've been answering your questions all, right, all week. All right, here's another one. So no, no. The government's introducing Why would you a carbon tax? tax? No, you're not changing the subject. I know you want to change the subject. No, I want to ask because you don't want to talk about Trudeau's carbon tax. You I want to ask a question because no. in a democracy we Sorry. ask the question and you answer. I, and I'll, I decide the answer I give, and the yes, answer and the answer is this: we will axe the tax, and Trudeau can try to divide Canadians by putting a carbon tax in a free trade ag agreement that we already had for years. It won't change a thing. It's misleading because I will axe the tax, and I will axe the tax with delight and with passion and with incredible speed. So when I'm Prime Minister, you will be shocked at the speed with which I will ask the tax. And the Canadian people will be able to look up at the gas stations and see the prices coming down. And Trudeau can try to distract from his hated carbon tax by putting it in a free trade amendment to a pre-existing agreement. It won't stop me because I will ax the tax, I will ax the tax, and I will ax the tax. Thank you. What okay. a little shit, Gibbon. <laughs> now, this was like, we asked the questions. Don't I want to ask you? And here's the thing, right? Pierre Polyev uses question period like a media PR availability, mm -hmm. uses media PR availabilities like debates, and uses debates as something that he can just avoid or pay to get out of. He'd rather debate the journalists. Mm hmm we're the journalists. We ask the questions. I'm like, yes. And when he's talking about the Ukraine free free trade deal and saying you know, it's just a carbon amendment and nothing would change, there was actually one journalist in the back that yelled out, misleading. Now, what would have been really cool is that if that journalist had actually gone through the free trade agreement itself and found one clause other than the carbon clause that was different from the permanent from the trade deal that exists now because what the conservatives are saying is because they passed a free trade deal with ukraine mm -hmm. when they were in power that if this one didn't pass nothing would change because they would still have a free trade agreement yes they would have the old one but they asked us for a new one mm -hmm. so do you think what are the odds that ukraine asked us for a new free trade deal and have publicly said that they like it only for us to impose upon them carbon pricing which never happened which they already had carbon pricing which they already have and which they need to have in a more aggressive form in order to join the eu which is one of their stated aspirations exactly and nothing else Is his statement of uh, Justin Trudeau uh, put in a carbon? No, he fucking didn't. I know, because I read it. They talk about carbon, uh, regula carbon regulatory fees. There's nothing inserted by the Canadian government in that free trade agreement. Nothing. So he's just lying straight to our faces. He's making shit up once again. Never happened. 
it's, it's, and I love that they're not letting him get away with it. Of course, what does he do? The minute he realizes he's caught, I'm going to do this when I'm PM and I'm going to ax it so fast and you're going to be amazed and the Canadian you're people gonna and then shocked. runs away. You're going to be runs shocked. Away. Yeah. Shades of Stephen Harper's, you won't recognize this country when I'm done with it. Exactly. You're going to be shocked. Can you, that, you're going to be shocked by how fast I'm going to do that. Yeah. I can see the, I can see the liberal clip now, right? I guess you're going to be shocked by I guess. What else? What else is he going to move fast to change? What else is he going to shock you with? He just walked right to, this is a negative campaign waiting to happen. He gets a little petulant, gets a little touchy. Mm -hmm. He's challenged. And the liberals put this out yesterday. Oh, Which is freaking brilliant. Maybe they're starting to learn. I think they're I think they're finally getting their comms together because watch this. Whoops. Definitely have got Do you support age restrictions for puberty blockers and hormone therapies for trans kids? Um, I think that uh, Justin Trudeau is trying to divide and distract Canadians. One it's your own Trudeau. party policy. A party convention. I think we should protect the rights of parents to make their own decisions. What does it mean? Two, keep and it I believe that adults should have the freedom to make any decision they want about their bodies. Three, change medical the interventions subject. like what? That, that, that is the language that you're part of. What medical used. interventions? Four, oh, act I want to ask you don't want to talk about Trudeau's question. carbon tax. You I want to ask a question because no. in a democracy, Sorry. we ask the question. Five, attack Trudeau the media. Trudeau can try to distract from his hated carbon tax. Six, blame Trudeau. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> There's the playbook. There's the playbook. Now, with regard to the Ukraine free trade deal, right? He has Andrew Scheer doing his stuff. And Andrew Scheer's out saying, in order for this trade deal to be implemented, Ukraine must agree to promote a carbon tax. That's not something we can support. CBC. Next paragraph. The trade agreement imposes no such obligation on the Ukrainian government to introduce a carbon tax. It does include a provision saying the two countries will cooperate to promote carbon pricing and measures to mitigate carbon leakage risks. Ukraine has had a carbon tax in place since 2011 and is actively seeking membership in the European Union, which has had an emissions trading system since 2005. The Ukrainian-Canadian Congress welcomed the bill's passage, but lamented the lack of unanimous support in the House of Commons. So the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress wants it, but the Conservatives know better. The President of Ukraine wants it, but the Conservatives know better. Yeah. And speaking of the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress, well, it seems that the Conservatives have needed to distract from Jenny Byrne mm. and now... Uh, Pierre, well, Danielle's move and Pierre's terrible comms. So we have um, them talking about the Loblaws freezers, which we told you yesterday. Um, we gave 12 million, they put in 36 million, and then we got the equivalent freezers that were the equivalent of taking 50,000 cars off the road per year permanently. Yeah. You know what we got for that money. And the Jenny Byrne thing, Jenny Byrne's firm lobbied Loblaws. And Loblaws played Jenny Burns firm. So the money is going the other way. <laughs> and we don't know what we got for that because I don't think Canadians get anything for someone getting paid to have lobbied. Well, have you seen seem to have a problem understanding in which direction money flows. Well, but apparently they're better for the economy. All right. So. And then they started distracting with um, that guy that was brought into the gallery when Volodymyr Zelensky was here, mm -hmm. yeah, who got applauded. And it seems that he was invited also to the reception with Zelensky by the prime minister's office. So they turned around, see, see, the prime minister, do you see, he told us he didn't, now he does, and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, and then we find out that the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, mm -hmm. the same one that approves of this deal sent the prime minister's office a list of about a thousand names of people that could be there and his name was on it mm -hmm. so what they're trying to make you believe is that the liberals then took that list supplied by the ukrainian canadian congress searched through that list and said hey there's a nazi we should invite him and it was the prime minister who did it by the way according to these folks 
this. All the while, let's not forget, again, no one applauded for Nazi because everybody in the House of Commons that was in there at the time thought he was a war hero. When he was put on the list, he was thought of as a war hero. When he was invited to the parties, he was thought of as a war hero. All the news came out later. And Pierre Polyev himself stood up in the House and applauded for. So if pointing the finger at logic, him. he applauded for a Nazi as well. Yeah. But he's having a problem with it. Yeah. Now, but the problem is, is that, no, they weren't applauding a Nazi. They were applauding who they thought there was a war hero. And remember, when they were there applauding a whole war hero, Pierre Polyev was mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. applauding very unenthusiastically. Well, because he's a Russian war asset. Hero. He's a Russian asset. Let's prove let's me wrong. Forget, let's not forget what actually happened. Yeah. So they're trying to divert with that. And then the other thing, which with the trying to divert, is something from Jagmeet Singh this time around. Because the NDP proposed a new law with Charlie Angus mm. that has something to do with deceptive or misleading ads from the fossil fuel industry well and this this bill i I first read the i read the headline and i'm like what i don't know what what? this doesn't and then i i did a little bit more reading and i watched the the clip with with charlie angus and discovered that oh he's trying to do to big oil what what the government did to big tobacco back in the day there has not been a cigarette advertised on television since 1971 in either canada or the u.s for good reason for very good reason. Sarah Fisher and all the usual suspects, but let's start with her because she's the director of communications for the, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm a communications guy, right? So she puts this out. I think I'm going to have to blow that up. Yeah, definitely got to blow that up. Go up to 200%. There you go. Please read it. The NDP have lost their minds, threatening jail time for Canadian oil and gas producers who promote their products? Charlie Angus NDP should be ashamed for tabling such a radical, dystopian, and anti-Canadian bill. And then she clips the offenses and punishments for it. Every producer who contravenes Section 6 is guilty of an offense and libel. On A, on conviction, on indictment to a fine not exceeding $1 million or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years or to both, or B, on summary conviction to a fine of not more than $500,000 or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or to both. Now, she says contravene Section 6. Well, what is Section 6? That's a very good question, sir. She doesn't volunteer it. CBC. What is the headline? NDP calls for ban on misleading, deceptive fossil fuel ads. Oh, so not for promoting Mm -hmm. oil and gas, for speaking positively about it, but for actually putting on air misleading and deceptive fossil fuel ads. Party says the bill would take the same approach it took to tobacco ads in 1997. Now, shouldn't the director of communications for a federal party have basic reading comprehension in at least one of Canada's official languages as a prerequisite to being hired as a director of communications because how do you read this bill seeks to punish you if you mislead Canadians on fossil fuels and understand they want to put you in jail for promoting the fossil fuel industry It's not what the bill said. Not at all. See, I was, when I first saw a headline saying he wants to put an end to fossil fuel ads, I'm like, what? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's because that's not what he was saying. (laughs) Like at all. Like not at all. Like not even damn close. So they just, they, again, this is not spin. This is outright lying. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's all I got, right? Outright line. As I, and they're saying, oh, yeah, if you ex- exercise your freedom of speech about being pro-oil, you can go to jail. That's that's where they're, that, that's where they're taking it. And it's like, no, no. 
<laughs> it's like Angus said. This is like Benson and Hedges telling you that they can help they can help end lung cancer. This is because big oil has always relied on the big tobacco playbook of delay and disinformation. Exactly. The new bill would outlaw marketing that downplays the climate-altering emissions and health hazards associated with the industry or promotes fossil fuels in a way that are false, misleading, or deceptive. Because Health Canada estimates that air pollution caused primarily by burning fossil fuels in North America contributes to 15,300 premature deaths per year in Canada. The Canadian Association of Physicians for Environment cites research that states fossil fuel air pollution in Canada leads to 34,000 premature deaths annually. This is not made up numbers either. Yes. This has been well researched over decades. Yes. And this is to counter. So the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment want to counter a group that's called Pathways, which is an Alberta based thing that promotes, you know, all the stuff like ethical oil and, you know, that oil, you know, we're, we're the cleanest industry or whatever. And there's no cleaner no, oil than true. Canadian oil and all that kind of stuff because. Pathways net zero ads were misleading because the consortium has not fully accounted for how it would achieve net zero emissions. Well, and you, you do understand where the term ethical oil comes from and what it means, right? Mm. It means, unlike a lot of countries around the world that are oil producing nations, the people who work in the oil patch in Alberta are paid a good wage, a very good wage, by the way, have safety factors involved, they have training involved that's what they're saying when they say ethical oil because the tailing ponds as we well know are on the verge of breaking and getting into the water table mm -hmm. but ethical oil the meaning behind it is the people who who work in those fields and pull that oil out of the ground and out of the out of the sands because it, it's still tar sands in my head but now that's what do they call it now oil sands oil sands it's uh, they're treated ethically and that's where the term ethical oil comes from and in that sense i cannot argue because they have to observe all safety protocols and they are paid a very good wage and they are trained now some people are trained more so than others roughnecks the people who work on the drilling platforms are very well trained of course their job time's limited because they're already automating that <laughs> yeah. and so much of the oil patch is already automated they actually have automated trucks now Yep. So it's only a matter of time before all those jobs disappear too. So, you know. So we have all these particular distractions that they're trying to work on at the same time. So tell me you're drowning without telling me you're drowning. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Pierre is trying to make a big deal with his auto theft mm. thing. And he came out yesterday with more information about that. Right? So it's the third day that he's trying to make this announcement happen because he keeps on getting tripped up on the trance stuff and not asking the question that becomes the news of the day. So just like he mentioned during the thing that he is happy, absolutely happy. Okay. With puberty blockers when you're an adult mm -hmm. after it's passed, puberty's happened. Well, it seems that his skip air quotes, big plan to stop cart theft is to take action after your car has been stolen. Yes. How does that help me again? Once again, He's another gonna... scenario where Good. cows are outside the barn. They're roaming about the field. I'm going to close the doors to keep them yeah. all in. So the first was his mandatory minimum sentencing, a recycled policy that has already failed and has already been overturned by the courts on several occasions. I'm going to punish you harder for something that's already illegal, which technically is moot because he wants to add, you know, if these things are committed within the context of organized crime, then you get a harsher sentence. But the law already allows for that. That's called an aggravating factor, which judges factor in at the time of sentencing. So basically, I'm just going to use better tough, better tough talk words mm -hmm. to make illegal what is already illegal to allow you to sentence to allow judges to sentence people longer for something that judges are already allowed to people, people to sentence long. Nah, I can't even talk. Judges are allowed to sentence people longer for because it's already an aggravating factor. So it's basically when we remember when we keep on talking about the 14 
characteristics of fascism. Mm -hmm. One of them is action for action's sake. Yes. This is action for action's sake because there's nothing in this law that doesn't that does anything different than the law already allows. Just like Danielle Smith's bill when she says, I'm now gonna ban top bottom surgery for under 18, which is happening nowhere. It's not happening. It doesn't exist. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Action for action's sake. I am making new law that doesn't actually change the law because that's what the law already is. But I'm putting some tough words around it to make it look like I'm doing something. Well, Harper really tried not. that. Harper tried that years ago. And when he did it, I said, what the hell? And somebody explained it to me and I went, okay, sure, fine. But really, if you wear a face covering during a riot, you will be charged. If you're in a riot, you're going to be charged. They're like, right. well, the face covering is because you're trying to hide your identity, so they want to charge you with more things. I'm like, isn't the riot enough <laughs> to hold you for a charge? And then, of course, the irony about all of this, his ban burkas, ban face coverings. A couple years later, we were all told to wear face coverings. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just, it's just a... So he's going to sentence you with a mandatory sentence. That's after the crime has happened, right? He's going to have um, more investigations at ports. Yes. Once your car's already been stolen, right? Who's going to pay for that? We're going to need more people there to do that. This. Is that going to be a private sector thing or the federal government? Who's paying for that? Which department does it come from? Yes. And now there's this as well. Read what's in the box, Mr. Grizzly. One second till I blow this up a bit. Pointing the finger at Trudeau, Paul Again. F. promised Tuesday that if conservatives formed the next government, he would spend millions on new scanners so border agents can better detect stolen cars in shipping containers. Okay. This is not a boondoggle just waiting to happen, right? Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's not like any of us from Ontario here don't have a front row seat for some rather um, unique conservative governmental business practices. I still don't have my bracelet. Did you ever get your bracelet? I never asked for one. No, we were all supposed to get them from from oh. Doug Ford. Remember the the COVID warning bracelets? Oh yes, yes. That they so, spent six million dollars on it. Yeah. So I am going to spend millions on new scanners, which is a contract. How much do you want to bet it's going to be sole sourced kits? Oh, of course it will be. Yeah. yeah. And how much do you want to bet it's going to come in? Got way more than the original price. Because he's going to owe a lot of people if he's prime minister because this dude needs a whole lot of help. And how much you want to bet it will make a damn bit of difference when it comes to car, rift, car thefts. You know why? Because somebody working that dock with that scanner is getting paid more to look the other way. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile. Not an accusation, just a statement of reality. Meanwhile, the liberals are actually holding a summit with industry experts to try to find some ways to prevent your car from being stolen in the first place. Yeah. Or to compel auto manufacturers to put latest technology and keep upgrading it. Because there was one time, I think like 12 or 13 or 14 years ago where they did it, mm -hmm. but then thieves found a way around it. And then they were, they were never obligated to upgrade it. See, here's the thing. You know what locks are for? It's to keep uh, innocent people, Innocent people, innocent. It's to keep those who would not have a crime of opportunity from committing that crime. You see something on the front seat of somebody's car. Oh, I could use that wallet full of money. Open the door. Oh, it's locked. Okay. And just keep walking. Now, I know that's a, an extreme scenario, but that's what it's effectively for is to keep honest people honest. If, you, if you're a criminal and this is what you do, you will find a way to make this happen. I know because when I worked in a prison in the Kingston Penitentiary, we were brought in to put cameras on the fence, the wall, the 35 foot high, three foot thick cement and limestone wall. Do you know why? Because why? an inmate had smuggled in pieces of wood no longer than this to assemble a 35 foot ladder to climb over the fence. And when they found the ladder the next morning lying against the fence, nobody, even most of the inmates, looked at it and said, I would dare get on that. And how the hell did this person do this? Because you know how many pieces of wood that small you need to assemble a ladder to get over a 35-foot wall? 
this person had a cord of wood stashed away in their cell and smuggled it all out, spread it around the yard where nobody could find it, pulled it together, made a ladder and climbed over the fence. Somebody who is intent on doing something will find a way to do it, period. So we put in as many mitigating circumstances as we can to try and prevent it. We're never going to be able to prevent 100% of it. It's as simple as that. Anybody who tells you they can is a lying idiot or asshole or a complete fool who is a total narcissist who believes that only I can solve this problem. Yep. Where have we heard that before? Yep. So, talking about more deception, I'm going to make a little, sl- normally I say a step to the right, but this time mm-hmm. it's going to be, and just a, no, we got to jump to the left <laughs> today because, and here's proof to all the people who hate watch us that mm-hmm. we're so anti conservative. Mm-hmm. We're actually going to defend a conservative right now. And it does happen. And it does happen. Um, Mr. Grizzly, would you put this up, please? Mr. Jugmeat, whoop. Mr. Jagmeet Singh put, put a tweet up yesterday that was really, really interesting because we're getting back to the food prices thing. You want to blow that up, please? Uh, I did. Uh, can I blow up a little bit more? Because it's really tiny. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Jagmeet Singh, breaking. One of Pierre Polyev's MPs has been blocked from voting on my bill to lower grocery prices due to a conflict of interest. The conflict of interest commissioner ruling has exposed his, his deep ties to corporate grocery that has profited millions. Oh, and he Joe. posts a picture of Pierre Polyev. With the MP in question. A nice looking fellow, that MP in question. Yes, indeed. And says. Conservative MP exposed as chairman of corporate grocery chain. The business chain did $2 billion in sales. And that's it. That's it. Doesn't identify the MP, doesn't say his name. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That strikes me as curious. Why would he do that? Why would Jack Mitzin put that attack and not say who it is? Mm -hmm. I wonder, wonder, wonder why. Well, I decided to look into it. Now, this is not a mystery, Kits and Cubs. Not a mystery at all. No, it isn't. Because we actually have talked about this MP on the show in the past. The MP is Scott Reed. Mm Mm-hmm. From the Conservatives, he is the MP for uh, Member of Parliament four 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 Lanark Frontenac Kingston. So basically, where the Beaver Lodge is, there's the city of Kingston. Kingston has two federal seats. There's the city of Kingston, and then there's the rural areas around it. Right, and that's the one he's in. That's the one he is. So he's really close by. Um, and yes. The grocery chain store that he is an executive for. Which, by the way, is not a grocery chain. No. They but sell they groceries, groceries. Yes. But they're is not a grocery chain. Giant Tiger. Yes. Which is known to be a discount store. And when I do buy groceries there, they are cheaper than anywhere else by a long shot. It's not even close. All right. Now. We did mention Scott Reed at another time with regard to Giant Tiger. Can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but I do remember we actually said it on the show. So he's presenting this as he's been exposed. No, he hasn't. If you look at his Wikipedia page, Mm -hmm. it's actually written. He's on the board of directors of Giant Tiger, a family-owned business that was founded by his father. And let's remember that. He has already come clean about this. What? Uh, you're scooping me, my dude. Sorry. <laughs> well, you got to get to the point, man. Get to the point. We're running out of time. You're saying, let's not forget. Let's not forget. We don't know. That's the whole point. You have to know it to be able to forget it. Two bills are being discussed. Mm-hmm. Scott Reed, knowing that he was on the board of Giant Tiger, wrote a letter to the ethics commissioner stating, hey, ethics commissioner, there are these two bills coming up that have to deal with food prices. And I'm on the board of a business that does sell some food. I think I should probably recuse myself from 
discussions, debates, and votes within my party and in the House having to do with that. But I want to disclose that. And the ethics commissioner said, in his letter back, like this, as you suggested, basically, I agree. You mm-hmm. should probably do that. And the letter from the ethics commissioner is dated October 2023. He's not hiding a damn thing. He's not hiding a damn thing, and this ain't breaking. No, it's not breaking, and he's not hiding anything. He has been forthcoming about this since, what, 2011? He even has it in his website, on his website? Yeah, that he says he sits on the board for, for Giant Tiger. It's not he's a secret. He's even got it on his blog, why it is that he's recusing himself from the... Yeah. This is a okay. good, good man. He's straight up about it. Now, here's the thing. I expect this type of thing from conservatives. Mm-hmm. Not shocked and surprised. Wish they didn't do it, but they're conservatives. We mm-hmm. kind of expect it from them. This is their playbook. But nothing pisses me off more <laughs> when well, a conservative does it, it pisses me off. But nothing pisses me off more when a social democrat chooses to mislead and represent allegedly. because they represent themselves as being better than that. And they're not That's the I saw they're this headline saying, and I'm like, what is this? So I started digging and I went, Oh, jug meat, bro, bro, come on the show and tell us why you keep doing this, please. Because man, you've lost the plot, dude. You've lost it. And you're losing party members every day. And you know where they're going? They're switching from a different shade of a similar color, from orange to red. And you're driving them there by pulling stunts like this. Outright misrepresentation. Not cool. Outright lie. Yeah. Not cool, dude. Yep, and meanwhile, he's now all over the press saying, hey, I put the Prime Minister on notice that if he doesn't have a pharma care plan by March 1st, there might be repercussions. Of course, not staying what those repercussions might be. But we have to... So, Jagmeet Singh's trying to get a lot of press, and um, he's not doing it the right way. He's not doing it the right way. And he's leaving us in a situation again where when we're telling Canadians, you know, like, choose, mm-hmm. but please don't vote for assholes and don't vote for people who will insult your intelligence... Kind of us leaving us with just one option, unless you're going to vote black or green. And uh, in a democracy, one de facto option, even though you have like five, three, mm-hmm. is not an option. This is yeah. not good for democracy. It's not. Check me. Come on, man. Bro, seriously, bro. What are you doing, man? This is not something that your mentor, Ed Broadbent, would be proud of. This is not it. Whatever it is, this is not it. All right, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right, kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this to you. Remember, sharing is caring, so tell your peeps and poops all about us. And if you would like to support us, you can do that by scanning that QR code, which is provided thanks to the Ray Girl, which brings you to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true North Eager Beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. If you'd like to support us in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to our YouTube page, True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated, and click our buttons, like, share, subscribe, lick them all, make them yours. Right? I licked it. It's mine. There you go. And therefore, you can support us that way. Or, oh, someone scanned a QR code. Hello, hello, hello. That was me. And, oh, oops. <laughs> All right. Well, hello. <laughs> and if you'd like to support us in yet another way, this QR code by Mr. Grizzly's Head brings you to our coffee page, coffee.com, ko fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And there you can make a contribution to the Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. All contributions are very, very, very appreciated. Thank you very much. Because democracy is something that you do. How about writing a letter of congratulations to certain members of the press? Tell them that you enjoyed that and that you would like to see more of that. A little positive reinforcement never hurts. Your right to complain, but right to positively reinforce when they do something you want to see more of. That also helps. All right. 
from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind and be sorry. Please be kind to and gentle with yourself. I'm even like tripping over my tagline. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Yeah. Drink the coffee. Have the glass of wine. Have the whiskey or the Guinness. We're only here for a short time. We're here for a good time. Unless, of course, Not you're addicted to any of those time. things, in which case don't do any of what I just suggested. So have a good time. The sun can't shine every day. Well, the credits, babe. We're here for a good You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. And some uh, very quick little by-election news for you, kids, before we go. Uh, in Durham, it appears that uh, the liberal candidate wanted to debate, but the debate had to be canceled because his opponents, more than one, weren't willing to show up. But Jamel Giovanni uh-huh. decided not to show up to debate. So he's got time to make videos accusing the prime minister of being racist, but no time to show up being show up for debate. Um, Mr. Uh, Durham, Rock, uh, well, not Mr. Durham, but uh, Mr. Rock, I can't remember what is Robert Rock, I believe his name is, the candidate for the Liberals. Uh, if you would like to come on our show and tell our, our kits and members of uh, Durham region uh, what it is that uh, you would have said in the debate, you are more than welcome to. And the by-election and PEI did happen finally, and it was a surprise. Uh, the Greens won the seat. Yeah, so uh, Taking one away from uh, the Progressive Conservatives. All right, kids. Have a great day. Let's end with a clip. I got a clip for you. Ooh. 44 like seconds. It. You'll like this. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. When he stands in this place and across the country, uh, wrenching his heartstrings uh, about the, the uh, prices the Canadians are paying for groceries, when his top advisor is in the pocket of Loblaws, giving him the same talking points as she gives Galen, Galen Weston when he appeared at Parliamentary Committee. Mr. Speaker, if Canadians are going to believe this leader of the opposition, he needs to come clean with who is funding his organization. I can't help but I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep it coming. All right, kids. Have a great day. I will yeah. see you on Monday. Uh, no, I will see you on Saturday. Pubcast. Yeah, Pubcast on Saturday. Uh, let me just find the thing here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to shut down all these other windows in the background. All right. I'll see you.